come back for another vlog video today. We're finally past the cold spell in Japan, which means things are starting to warm up a little bit. It is still winter, so things are, of course, cold. I mean, you'd expect that anyway, but it's starting to get a little bit warmer, so we're not freezing our backsides off. So, what have we been up to this week? Honestly, not much. It's mostly been working. As I mentioned in a previous video, we've had to put a lot of our classes online. So I've been pretty busy trying to get a face-to-face -face seminar kind of prepared to do in an online class, which has been kind of tough, but I've managed to get quite a bit of it done. So things are starting to look a lot better on the work side. But unfortunately, Osaka is also now in a state of emergency. Yeah, as of this week, Osaka was put into a state of emergency alongside Hyogo and Kyoto, two other prefectures very, very close to here. And actually, quite a few prefectures have been put into the state of emergency since this week. There's the Aichi and Gifu prefectures in the middle of Japan. There's the Tochigi prefecture, which is very, very close to Tokyo. And there's also Fukuoka, which is the capital of Kyushu. So yeah, not good. But as I mentioned last time, all this means is it's a polite request from the government to not have to go out if you don't need to. So a lot of people are trying to work from home. Will things change? I hope so. I really do hope so, because I want things to kind of return to some kind of normal soon. The vaccine is due to be passed in Japan in about mid-February time, so hopefully some of the older population and the health workers will be able to get that first. But eradicating anything past the PMDA, which is like the FDA and EMA in Japan, is pretty hard. So uh, yeah. We don't know if it's going to pass or not, but we'll wait and see. Hopefully we'll get the vaccine soon. But anyway, today, what are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to be looking at a Japanese national holiday that happens every year. We're going to be looking at the Japanese coming of age day, or in Japanese, Seiji no Hi. So in Japan, you legally become an adult when you turn 20. And what this means, of course, is you can drink things like alcohol. For example, you can drink some sake. And uh, this is my favorite sake. This is absolutely delicious. Oh, I love drinking this. But it also signifies a huge leap into adulthood and maturity. And typically what will happen is city offices will hold an event called a Seijin Shiki, which is a coming of age ceremony to allow people that have turned 20 from April 2nd to April 1st of that year to come and watch an event. And that includes some speeches from different people. And then also they get some kind of like small presents just to signify, hey, you've turned 20 years old. You are now officially an adult. And then after that ceremony, people typically go out to shrines and temples with their families just to pray for prosperity throughout their life and also so that they can have a nice day out with the family and get some nice photos. Because typically people are wearing kimonos during these events. Now for this event, the traditional clothing for ladies is typically something called a furisode. A furisode is a very long sleeve kimono that women will wear on the coming of age, uh, much like our beautiful Rem kimono figure here. So it has those very, very nice kind of long sleeves down here. Very pretty. Um, oh, I forgot how pretty this figure is. <laughs> and then ladies will also get their hair done in a very, very detailed and extremely <laughs> complex way the night before. And the reason they do it the night before is because one, there are a ton of reservations. So it's almost nigh impossible to get a reservation on the day. But two, it takes a huge amount of time to actually do that. And I've heard from my kimono teacher that there have been kind of nightmare stories of a lot of women having to sleep kind of face down like this into their hands so that they don't mess up their hair for the next day. So for ladies, it sounds pretty tough. And then for men, it's just typically a kimono with a haori, which is kind of a top piece, and then also a hakama, which looks a bit like a very, very long skirt. Um, very traditional. But in recent years, a lot of Japanese men now go out wearing suits. So they'll go to their coming of age day wearing a professional suit. And that suit might also be used when they go to apply for jobs. So it's kind of a shame because that tradition of wearing the kimono and the hakama is starting to get lost. And as some of you may or may not know, one of my hobbies is actually learning how to put on Japanese kimono and hakama and haori. And we can talk about that in another video because I would like to talk about that with you all and the concept of uh, cultural appropriation because it's just ridiculous. But anyway, we'll talk about that another time. But basically, it's not that difficult, and it's just a shame to see that tradition slowly starting to disappear. So it's kind of sad. And that's basically what Coming of Age Day is. It's just a way to celebrate becoming an adult and turning 20. However, like most things in Japan, there's a twist. In 2018, the Japanese government officially changed the age of adulthood from 20 down to 18. And this caused a lot of confusion for Coming of Age Day. 
even now in 2021, it's still for people who are 20 years old, even though the law says that it's now 18. And this officially kind of comes into effect for coming of age day in 2022. So yeah, I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you. You're probably just as confused as I am. But in 2022, it will be 100% age 18 for when people are celebrating coming of age day. But my question is, what happens to those people who are 19 between this year and next year? Do they also celebrate? Is it going to be 18, 19 and 20 years old? Or is it just going to be skipped for them and they never get to celebrate it? I don't know. I don't think anyone really knows. Even the government probably doesn't know. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a confusing question. But that's basically everything for today's video. I did want to talk about another topic today, which is the Hanshin earthquake, because today, being January 17th, is the official anniversary for 26 years ago when Japan in the Kansai region had a huge earthquake and it just leveled so many cities here. It was massive and yeah, people are still kind of struggling with it now. But we'll talk about that in another video in the future because I think that earthquakes is a whole topic that we can go into a lot of detail on. Also, if you haven't seen it already, I did upload that top 10 anime figures for last year. So please do go watch it if you want to go watch it. If you don't want to, doesn't matter. I enjoyed making it, it was kind of good fun. So I might do a few more of those kinds of things during this year. But anyway, love you all, please stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you in another video coming soon. Okay, bye bye! Well, that was a tiring one, and uh, God, it makes me want to drink this even more now. Uh, this sake, for all of you that might be interested, is called Bizan. It comes from Tokushima, it's my wife's hometown. It's actually super, super tasty, and it's cheap. It's about 10 bucks for this bottle, it's so nice. Um, but hey, this is week three of this vlog series, and I'm really, really curious, are people still watching this? If you are, great, please tell me what you've enjoyed so far, and also it'd be lovely to hear what you want to see in more videos. I've seen some person comment before that they want to see some kind of comparison between fake figures and real figures. That's kind of tough to do, but I can try to do that in the future, so I'm already thinking of some ideas for that. But please do let me know below, I'd love to hear your comments. Alright, bye bye!